Okay, I'm back. And by the way, if wherever you watch this, if you're watching this anywhere but Facebook and you realize some of the episodes are missing, like MySpace was weird about copyright infringement when I had names that were too similar to other shows and so they wouldn't let me post them, or like YouTube, sometimes they go over a little. Facebook and Blip TV, you can always find every episode. They're all there together. Okay, so Facebook is the best place to check though. Now, partnership with yourself. Once you start taking your own mind seriously, some other interesting things are going to start happening. Things like your intuition will start to kick in. And men, we have intuition too. Most women's intuition is stronger by default because men tend to be overly logical. Women are more in touch with their emotions. It's a generalization. It's not a judgment. It's just a fact. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. But you really have to work to make sure that you're clear of a lot of your own fear and a lot of your own attachments before your intuition can function properly. Because the intuition is the small voice. We've talked about it lots of times. The little voice. The little voice who's like, yeah, you should apply for that job, totally. And then fear comes in. You can't apply for that job. You'll never get it. You're not good enough. Rawr. You got to get rid of that voice. Silence that voice. Okay? And part of that comes, again, just by accepting that everything your mind does, everything your body does, is trying to help you. It means well. All your subconscious is doing is playing out the programs that it's adapted over your whole life, like we talked about last episode. If you've told yourself your entire life, I'm fat and nobody loves me, then don't be surprised when you have a lot of problems with yo-yo dieting. Because your mind's like, I'm fat, nobody loves me. I don't, I don't really know what this whole Weight Watchers thing is about, because I'm fat. So you have to work to change these ideas, change these beliefs. How do you do this? Actually, I just want to say one other thing first, because I'm talking about intuition. Then I'm going to talk about how to change these beliefs, and that'll round us out. Robert Moss wrote a fantastic book called The Three Only Things. It's dreams, intuition, and coincidence. And how to start paying attention to these things as signs from the universe. Once you start listening to yourself and trusting yourself and trusting the universe to guide you, then interesting things will start to happen. Your dreams will start to be more meaningful. Like, if you go to bed thinking about a question that you need an answer to, very often you'll wake up in the morning with the answer. I'm not saying go to bed worrying, because this is the time that you program your subconscious mind. Remember that. But if you're like, you know, I really need an extra $500. How can I come up with $500? And just start thinking about ways to come up with $500 and go to sleep. And when you wake up, don't be surprised if you have a brilliant idea. Same thing. Your intuition will kick in. Call it your reticular activator. Call it whatever you want. That when you're walking by, you know, you'll see a sign in the window of Starbucks that says... Painter needed, $500 flat. And you're all like, I can paint? Cool. Because now you've started looking for it and your mind will start to move into alignment. And the third thing is coincidence. I don't talk too much about the mystical stuff on this show. But I've had some wild experiences in my life. And I can do some pretty wild things myself. But very, very, very rarely does any of it ever move beyond the realm of potential coincidence, even with the law of attraction. A lot of people will knock the law of attraction if you're like, I need $500, and then somebody just walks up and hands you $500, a naysayer will say, well, how do you know that wasn't going to happen anyway? You don't, but it does not matter whether or not it was going to happen anyway, as long as what you want happened. Does that make sense? All you care about is the end result. Did what you want happen? And I can tell you, in my experiences with meditation, they really took off, and I really started seeing and experiencing and accomplishing some really tremendous things. Once I completely gave up, is this just my imagination? Or am I really traveling to some other place and experiencing some higher world and really, you know, connecting with my creator? Or is it just all in my mind? And I can tell you to this day, I don't know. I just gave up caring. Okay, so stop trying to label and restrict and quantify and put everything in a box because it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Logic can only take you so far in this realm, and I can tell you how far it is right here. You can logically listen to me and be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to try it. And then after that, it's like totally non-logical. 
Sorry. Some people can accept that easily. Some people can't. And I don't know why I can, honestly. Because I'm, like, hyper-logical. I think I shared with you before. If you want to explain something to me, I need to know why. And yet, when it comes to, like, prayer and meditation and, you know, miracles and stuff, I'm just like, huh, wow, that happened. Cool. Yeah. Heart disease. Cured. Good times. Great. Mm. So, I, it's just something I've been able to cultivate. Okay? Now, when you talk about changing this programming in your subconscious mind, and we talked about it during the episode about self-image, realize that when these voices come up, as I've told you before, you don't have to listen to the negative voices. Just because a thought pops into your head doesn't mean you have to believe it. And if you really want to take this up to the next level, just sit still for a minute, just kind of relax, you know, Inhale, exhale a few times, and just watch your breathing. If you want a super easy way to meditate, that's it. Just sit and follow your breathing. Just pay attention to your inhale and exhale, and congratulations, you're meditating. And as these thoughts and ideas come into your mind, especially if they're negative thoughts and ideas, interact with them. Honestly. You don't have to tell anybody. If you're afraid, oh, people might think I'm crazy. Well, don't tell anybody you're doing it. It'll be our secret. Okay? And if you think I'm crazy, I don't care because I know it works. And I've taught it to lots of people and it works for them too. Okay? Talk to these voices. Talk to the fear. Just let it know this isn't helping. This isn't helping. I realize that you're trying to protect me from getting hurt by telling me that he's going to leave. But it's not helping. Okay? Thank you for sharing. That's a common thing a lot of people teach. Just tell it, thank you for sharing. But the difference is, I don't feel like you should ignore it. Dialogue with it. Ask, how can we work together? How can you help me? I understand you're trying to help me. I understand you want me to be happy and safe and secure. How can we work together to make that happen? And just kind of relax and wait. Remember, you don't have to put a lot of limits and thoughts into this or I feel silly. Just put all that to the side. Just try it on. Just act as if. Act as if you have absolute control over the supercomputer that's between your ears. That you have absolute control over the program it's running and the course that it is taking. Okay? Because I got a secret for you. You do have absolute control over the supercomputer between your ears. Just right now, you're not using it right. You haven't been using it right this entire time. If you want to know how you've been using it, then look around. Your results. That's what it is. The money you make, the place you live, the relationships you have, the body you have, all of that is a result of what you have thought. And if you want it to be different, you have to start thinking differently and partner with your own inner resources, okay? Start paying attention to your dreams. Start paying attention to your intuition. If something feels wrong, it's probably wrong. If something feels right, it's probably right. And you know the difference. For the most part, the fear that's up here in the chest, that's the dumb fear. You don't really need to listen to that fear. The fear that's down here in the tummy, or the feeling that's down here in the tummy, that's the one you want to hear. That's the real you, okay? That's where your real intuition resides. If you feel like, oh, I really want this job, but I'm scared, that's the dumb fear. Don't listen to that fear. If you're like, uh, that just doesn't seem right to me. That's the right fear. Listen to that one. Fear has its place. Remember, I knock fear a lot, but what I'm talking about, fear is a navigational system too. Just remember, it only lives in the future. It's a call to preparation. If there's something you're afraid of, something you're worried about, then do something about it. And if you can't do anything about it, then let it go. Okay? I think I'm running out of time, but I just want to share one other thing. If you're afraid of a relationship that is going to end, or if you're afraid of a loved one that is going to pass away, and you're worried about what's going to happen in the future. Don't. It does not matter. Because here's the thing. You have the time that you have. You have the opportunity to share with each other and experience each other and love each other and be together right now. And that's all any of us have is right now. Okay? Even if you think you got forever, none of us know when our time is up. All we ever have is right now. So live it. Love it. Okay? Find me. Love you. PeaceLoveMoney.com. Okay.